Hey everyone, Mr. Shatter here to talk about rates of change and limits, part three. Objectives, calculate average and instantaneous rates of change. Let's first start by talking about average rate of change. So it says, example one, an object drop from rest from the top of a tall building falls at this particular speed. Uh, in the first T seconds, find the average speed during the first four seconds. Well, um, just a little pro tip for you, very important. Average speed or average rate of change is just slope. Change in Y over change in X. In order to do that, you just simply need two coordinates. So if I'm concerning myself with the first four seconds, what I'm really concerning myself with is the beginning, which is t equals zero, and the end, which is t equals four. Um, so if I ask myself, what's the position of this object at t equals zero? I just have to plug zero into the function, and I get zero. And this gives me the coordinate zero comma zero. And if I wanna figure out the position at four, I just plug four into t, and I get uh, 256, gives me the coordinate for 256. So to calculate the average rate of change, which I'll abbreviate average rate of change, average rock is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And this is just simply 256 over four, which is gonna equal 64, um, I didn't really provide a unit, so we'll just say feet per second. Okay, so anytime you're calculating the average rate of change, it's just simple algebraic slope. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Let's talk about instantaneous rate of change. An instantaneous rate of change, we're referring to the speed of an object exactly at one moment in time. Uh, in this example, we're going to take a look at the object speed exactly at T equals 4. Well, in order to get an estimate, not an exact value, an estimate, let's go ahead and examine the position at four and five, right? Five is a very close value to four. So let's do the same thing we just did. Um, at t equals four, I think we knew the position already was 256. So we'll just write that down. And then if we use t equals five to find the position, you just plug five into the function um, and you get uh, 400. And so that gives you the coordinate five comma 400. And now you can just find the average rate of change, which is y2 minus y1, all divide x2 minus x1, which is gonna equal um, 144 divided by one, which is 144 uh, feet per second. This is an estimation. The question is, how could I actually get closer to the speed exactly at four? Um, and the answer is to basically try a different value. So instead of four and five, what if I chose four, what if I chose four and 4.1? Or for that matter, what if I chose 4.000001, right? And, and so on and so forth until I can get a value that, that this increment is so incredibly close to four, so incredibly small, that I'm really just considering the rate of change between four and four, which is the rate of change at four. Um, and to do this, we're gonna use limits. So to find the value at four, the, the actual speed at four, um, we're gonna call the second value four plus h. And what we want to do is essentially have the limit as h approaches zero. We want it to be extremely, extremely close to zero. Um, so let's go ahead and try that. So if we want this, we want um, my, my first x value to be four and my second x value to be four plus h. And the function value at four, um, we know uh, f of four is 256, which we did a couple of times. And f of four plus h is uh, exactly that. We'll just do, um, it's a function, uh, 16t squared, I think it was. So 16 times four plus h squared. So these are my x values, my x values. Uh, and these are my y values. And I'm just going to use my average rate of change formula. So y2 minus y1, all divide x2 minus x1. And what I essentially want to do is I want to take this expression and I want to have the limit as h approaches zero. Because what we're doing is we're having that little bit away from four being as close to zero as possible. And now I'm just gonna uh, you know, simplify this and see if we can find the answer. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can expand this. 
Um, so this is going to equal the limit as h approaches 0 of, uh, of let's just uh, multiply the 16 as well while we're doing this. So 256 plus 128h plus 16h squared minus 256. All divide. Notice on the bottom, 4 minus 4 makes 0, leaving me just with h. 256 and 256 cancel. What's more interesting, the only two terms left in the numerator both contain h, right? So let's factor it out. So this is the limit as h approaches 0 of h times 128 plus 16h, all divide h, and the h's cancel. And what that leaves me with is the limit as h approaches 0 of 128 plus 16h. And now I can use direct substitution, plug that right in, and get the answer of 128 feet per second. So our estimate was not too far off. Our estimate using 4 and 5 was 144, but the actual speed exactly at 4 seconds is 128. So limits help us make that uh, second value instantaneously just kind of disappear that little end piece. So that's the speed exactly at 4, the instantaneous rate of change.